So here I am once again adding stuff to the LED table. Um, seen a few interactive, touch interactive tables on the web. I figured why not? I could add that into mine. Um, so here it is. Uh, I'm not going to go over what's already on the table previously. Um, I'll put a few links links in the description that you can check those out if you want to. I'm just going to go over the, uh, the added interactive part. Um, also, I built mine a little bit differently than all the ones that I've seen on the web. So first I'll go over what the features are that I've added and then I'll go over um, how I built it differently and the pros and the cons of that. Um, so we have, we have the original Tetris and Snake, um, but we have this new paint mode. So we go into paint mode and we got three options. We've got draw, follow. Um, follow is like your, I don't know, the one that you see mostly on the web. Um, I couldn't think of a better name, so open to suggestions. Um, and then you have an animate where you can actually animate some frames. Um, so follow is, it's just like your normal one. Um, I've got a couple options in here for like, the speed of the color that rotates and then how long you want your tail. Um, just kind of arbitrary numbers from like 0 to 5, but we'll just go ahead and pick one. And you can just draw on it. And it's just like a, just like your usual, usual ones that you see on the web. Um, so you can change the length of the tail, tail, you can change how fast the color rotates, but it just fades out over time. Uh, and so yeah, it just... <coughs> Touch interactive, right? And then we have um, draw mode, which you get this little menu where you have your selected color uh, and then your color options, so red, green, blue, and then white because these are RGBW um, strips in here, a clear button, and then up and down for the color that you want. So we can like hit down and you can see here red's fading out, hold up, comes back in. Um, select green, change it to yellow, and then you can go ahead and draw on it. Um, the, uh, the drawing saves into memory until you turn the table off. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't write it into memory or anything. I didn't want to eat up the EEPROM and didn't want to wire an SD card, so. Um, it only it only saves till you turn the table off and get clear, and it's it's cleared out. Um, but if we go ahead and draw it back in, let's see, so green, I'll draw that face back in. You can hide the menu if you hit the tap that button. Menu's hidden. All the buttons still work, so I guess if we hit clear, it'll still clear. Um, menu pops back up, but you can hide the menu if you don't want to show uh, <coughs> the color options. So then we have this animate, which is similar to draw, except that you can do multiple frames. Um, so you can pick the frames you want, anywhere from 2 to like 24, I think I put in. Um, and you, since it saves to memory, it saves separately from the paint mode, so you can, you can always change the frames after if you picked a number you didn't like or something, um, and you end up needing more or less. Uh, and you can pick the frame rate that it displays the animation at. Um, anywhere from, I think, like one frame a second to 24 frames a second. Just random numbers I picked. Um, so, same kind of thing. You got your, your color menu. And you can go ahead and draw in on it. Um, go ahead and uh, see if I can make a brownish color. Brown's hard to make. Good enough. Um, but then the animate, if you tap your selected color, you have your kind of animation controls. <coughs> so here's your frame, and you hit forward and you go to the next frame, all the way up till the max frame number that you selected. Um, you also have a clear button here, just because it's in case you want to clear multiple frames, it's easier to just do it from here than like switching back each time. Um, so that's the X, and then you have the C, which is for copy. You can copy your your displayed frame to all the other frames. So like C0, we have this little line. All the other frames are empty. So we go here and we hit C, and you can see it like blinks to copy. Although if it's black and you copy, you won't see the blink because 
frame selects. No other frames have that line. Uh, so then we can go back to our select color, get rid of all this stuff, and we can start drawing. play button and it'll hide the, uh, the menu I guess and it'll play it and while you're in play mode you can't it's all disabled you can't uh, draw back over it you can't select any of the buttons um, until you hit the, uh, the play button again and then it all comes back okay so on to uh, how I did it differently than uh, most of the ones I've seen on the web um, and the pros and the cons of that uh, so, most people take to an IR LED and an IR receiver, and they kind of angle them a little bit, like so. And, uh, so the, the IR LED kind of fires off in this direction, and when you put, like, your hand or something uh, above it, it bounces the, the light, and then the receiver can see it. So they're using, like, a light proximity detection. And uh, a lot of them that I've seen um, will have like one pair of receiver and LED for like four pixels. So the, um, what do you call it, the precision isn't as great as like per pixel and I really wanted per pixel. Uh, also a lot of the people that do it this way use um, a clear glass so it can detect the light a lot better. I'm using like a, it's, it's translucent but it's not transparent so the detection will be a little bit harder. Uh, I did see one guy on the web that did do it uh, per pixel and with a glass that is not translucent. Uh, I think uh, I think his name is Dirt Cheap Hacks. Um, he did a pretty good job of it. He had uh, it was like per pixel, um, just like the way I want. And he had a, a very similar cover. Um, the the reason I still didn't go that way, even though I had seen that somebody did do it, was because he has a 14 by 14 grid, so he only has 198 LEDs, whereas I have like a 28 by 26 grid so that's 728 pairs of LEDs and receivers that I would need which is just a lot of power and a lot of wiring and a lot of extra IO pins that I'd have to do and I just re didn't really want to um, do that also uh, the dirt cheap hacks guy has a much larger pixel size than I do um, so he could fit like the IR LED and receiver in each pixel and it's it would still work well. I'm not sure I could fit these into my pixel. My pixels are about the size of my finger, maybe just a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller than the width of my thumb. Um, so fitting these in there was just not really something that I wanted to try and attack, and also I felt like it'd block out of a lot of light. So what I did was um, I did a break beam method. So I have an IR LED shooting across each row and uh, in column and then a receiver on the the other side and it works out really well I was pretty happy with it um, it does come with some cons which right now I'm okay with but we'll see how I feel about it later um, and that would be that it really only works for kind of rounder square objects so if I put like this on uh, this kind of like rectangular shape you can see it, it works well until I start rotating it um, then it just sees it as one big block and also objects with like a hole they can't see the inside uh, because it is brake beam so it's, it's cutting out anything in the middle and also I can't do multiple objects without it thinking that there are things elsewhere uh, one one solution to this is that I could also do a separate layer um, where I have brake beam running horizontally across both directions. That would help solve kind of weird shapes for multiple objects. And maybe one day I'll add that in. It would still 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 be a a lot better than doing it uh, one a pair of uh, IR LED and receiver per pixel. It would basically just double what I have now. So instead of like 54 pairs, I'd have roughly 108. I think it's just a little bit more than that actually. But um, then it would then it would cut out all this. It would be able to do multiple objects and such. I mean, to a degree. But uh, 
So, I mean, that's, that's kind of why I chose the break beam method. I just didn't really want to do all that wiring for as many pixels as I have, and I and, uh, just didn't want to try and really fit the, the pair of IR receivers and LEDs in, in every pixel. So, we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and jump inside and, and take a look and see what that looks like. All right, so here's the inside. The uh, lid just comes off, like usual. we have our, our grid. So I just routed in little channels and I've got the IR receiver. I went every other direction so that um, the IR, uh, I guess the IR light um, wasn't like directly next to each other. It kind of gives, like since they're offset this one, this one shoots this direction and has a little bit more width just in case it spilled over to, uh, to fill into the, the receiver. So the, re the receivers are the black dots, the, the LEDs themselves, I put a little tape over them just because uh, I noticed that when I put the lid on, the light was reflecting up and over the channel into the receiver next to it. And so, that's the uh, the tape over each of the LED channels. And then I, I have just a little bit of tape in the corners, just kind of like thicken it up. Um, because when I put the lid on it, it would kind of smash down some of the receivers and they it kind of tweaked them a little bit. So adding just a little bit of a little bit of extra height from the bottom of the lid helped not um, turn them out. So this whole thing just comes off. It's, it's actually detachable with a couple clips and stuff. Um, so we'll go ahead and pull this off. Oh god, look at that wiring mess. Okay, I'm just kidding. None of this is part of it. Um, but so there's, there's a table, the normal inside, which I've shown before. Um, pretty simple, power on the bottom, controls at the top. Okay, so here's the underside. Um, it's a bit of wiring, but it's way better than doing like 728 LEDs. We have four MPC 23017s, one for each side. So like here's one, um, there's one, here's one, and there's one. And you just have your receivers and, and LEDs wired up. Um, this here is a 3.3 volt converter because I'm running the MPCs on 3.3 volts since the TNT input pins seem to be 3.3 volt. And uh, I just got a little couple connectors for everything. So this is a connector for the IR receivers. This is a connector for the IR LEDs which are at 5 volt. And then at the top is a connector for all the, the data um, into the MPCs. And then that all gets turned on and off uh, when you when you go in the mode with these transistors. So I got a little transistor that, that turns off uh, basically all the IR stuff when when you're not in the IR mode to save power. And then when you go into the IR mode, it turns it all on. I have all this red tape here because um, adding in all the extra wiring under here kind of thickened it up a little bit, and I had originally built it to just barely fit all this stuff and so I had to kind of like route out an edge and drop those down a little bit but it wasn't quite enough so I added just kind of like this little like foam tape to make it a little thicker and rise it up a little bit so that everything fit nicely um, but that's that thanks for watching